Hey troops, Gen Dick Commando here and welcome to the channel guys. My name's Ryan and I'm a former Royal Marine from Great Britain, the United Kingdom and today we're going to be reacting to how many people did nuclear energy kill, okay? So the nuclear death toll. This is going to be interesting guys. I've never done a video like this one before. I've never reacted to something like this. I think it's going to be pretty good. It, um, it's doing really, really well as well. It's got like over 2 million views in one day. So I thought, hey, why not? Why not react to this one? It's obviously a good one, and yeah, it's a good subject. So before we get into it, guys, if you don't mind smashing that like, share, and subscribe button, it would really help me out. And um, yeah, I just thank you for being here, guys. If you want to speak to me, drop a comment in the comments bit, and I'll get back to you guys, okay? But other than that, enjoy this one. Nuclear energy creates an uneasy feeling of danger for many people. Ancient and dangerous minerals are concentrated to awaken seemingly unnatural powers, creating horribly toxic elements that, if they escape, can and have killed people in horrible ways. How many people has nuclear energy killed, and how? Nuclear energy has been a thing since 1951, and since then, there have been around 30 reported accidents globally. Most of them were pretty minor compared to the two disasters everybody is familiar with, Fukushima and Chernobyl. Yeah, I, I think we all know about these one, guys. Drop a comment if you didn't hear about these one before. But uh, for me, it's mainly Chernobyl. That's that's the one that uh, is a little closer to home anyway with regards um, of people knowing about it, you know, and stuff. So, yeah, let me know if you've experienced the, under, experienced the understanding of this in the news or anything, if you've heard about Ukraine or Japan. Chernobyl is undoubtedly the worst nuclear accident in history. Yeah, in 86, it's like pretty much, it's within our lifetime, isn't it? Yeah, 86 didn't really happen too long ago. Um, and, and people are still like seeing the effects of this to this day, you know, and the mutation of, of the, some of the animals over there and things. It's crazy, man, what's came of this. ...history for a number of reasons. The reactor technology was old and ill-prepared for emergencies, and the government response was slow and more concerned about image than damage control. Still, only 31 people died directly in the accident. Right, so that's not a lot of people then, guys, really, is it? 31, I mean, it's still bad, don't get me wrong, but 31 people for a nuclear reaction problem? I mean, that's, yeah, that's really low. But what makes nuclear energy scary is not reactors blowing up, but the radiation they release. So the real question is how many deaths through cancer and other diseases will Chernobyl cause? Here wow, things okay. get really complicated because you dip right into controversy and just discussing the different estimates and how they were calculated deserves a video of its own. The most pessimistic estimate comes from a study commissioned by the European Green Party and projects up to 60,000 premature deaths by the year 2065. So that's an extreme number now. We've went from like you know, a couple of dozen to 60,000 long-term deaths. How do they measure it, though? That's the thing. And how do they under how can they link it to Chernobyl as well? Most scientific studies come up with numbers much lower than this. The WHO has estimated that in total, the long-term death toll will be around 4,000. While the UN Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation concluded that even this figure could be too high. For more details on this, check our research document. The second big nuclear accident was Fukushima Daiichi in 2011. Fukushima... Right, hang on a minute. Why am I thinking that this happened a lot earlier than that? Why am I thinking that? It obviously makes sense now and I remember it, but be before even speaking about this, I always thought that was before Chernobyl for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe my brain's a bit mashed up from the military. <laughs> did not only operate with much better technology that was less dangerous in the first place, much better security measures were in place and the official response was fast and decisive. And so the current death toll is only 573. The major difference here is that these deaths were not a consequence of radiation. They were indirect deaths from the stress of the evacuation of the areas around the reactors and occurred almost entirely in older populations. Estimate. Right, okay, so the elder, the stress of the situation, it could have been heart attacks and this type of stuff. So, yeah, I can understand that kind of death toll, and that makes perfect sense in an extreme kind of uh, environment and such. So the possible long-term deaths from radiation vary widely, from none at all to about 1,000. Right, so that's much lower than... 
Yeah, it's much lower than the Chernobyl one, isn't it, really? Still horrendous. You don't want to kind of die of uh, of anything relating to a nuclear disaster, but still, thousand. that's a lot less than I actually thought, guys. Let me know in the comments if you thought as well. In terms of the other long-term consequences, an increase in thyroid cancer in children has been observed, but according to the WHO, this is related to the increased screening rates. By 2018, there had been only one confirmed death among workers as a result of radiation-induced lung cancer. Now, let's compare this to renewable energy. Solar wind and geothermal energy basically only cause deaths as a result of construction and maintenance accidents. Unfortunately, their current share of global energy is pretty low. The major player in renewable energy is hydropower, which mostly means building dams and letting water flow through turbines from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. In total, hydro has been the most fatal in terms of accidents, with hundreds of thousands of deaths in the last half century. One accident clearly stands out, the 1975 Bankau hydroelectric dam failure in China, which has striking similarities to Chernobyl. Old technology, poor design and poor management by authoritarian governments concerned about appearances. Right, so if they're concerned about appearances, then that doesn't necessarily mean a lack of funding, because that's what I was thinking originally. Well, why are they still using old infrastructure X, Y, Z? Well, it's it's clearly got nothing to do with money in this case, then it seems. It seems more of a, you know, we, 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 do, we don't want to get rid of it because it's maybe traditional, it looks nice, and, you know, it's close to home, so to speak. They don't want to modernize it. Um, old dog, new tricks, that comes to mind. In a nutshell, a massive typhoon triggered intense flooding that destroyed the dam and, subsequently, a number of smaller dams in a chain reaction, unleashing a flood of over 15 billion cubic meters of water in total. Kilometer-wide waves as high as buildings devastated thousands of square kilometers of countryside and countless communities. All in all, that's something that you don't want to get involved in, straight up. All the death toll from just this one accident and its direct consequences is estimated to lie between 85,000 to 240,000. What? But all of these deaths caused by nuclear and renewable energy are actually negligible in comparison to the real killer energy source, fossil fuel, the most widely used source of energy and electricity. Hang on a minute, you're kidding me, right? When we burn fossil fuels to heat up water and make turbines spin, or to cause mini explosions to move cars with internal combustion engines, gases like ozone, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide are released into the atmosphere. Breathing in these gases disrupts lung function, which aggravates chronic conditions like asthma and bronchitis, and causes a wide range of respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. And cardiovascular disease is, and, and respiratory diseases, I'm, I might be wrong in this, but let me know in the comments if I'm right, is the biggest killer on the planet, right? Like cardiovascular respiratory disease is the biggest killer, unless I'm mistaken. I don't know why I've got that in my head, but I'm pretty sure... It is the case. Let me know, guys, if I'm right or wrong. But even more dangerous is the fine particle pollution burning fossil fuels causes. A mixture of solid and liquid droplets of poisonous substances as small as 2.5 microns in diameter. They easily find their way deep into your lungs and increase the risk of deadly diseases like lung cancer, stroke and heart disease. Fossil fuel-related air pollution is the number one cause of environmental-related deaths in the world. According to the WHO, it accounts for 29% of all cases of lung cancer. So that's crazy. That's like nearly a third air pollution and lung cancer. Really? Like, and you think about the risk with smoking, and then you can literally just get, you've got a 30% chance of getting it anywhere. Well, yeah, that, that's that's crazy, guys. All, all air pollution, I can't believe that. That's crazy. 17% of deaths from acute lower respiratory infection 24% from stroke, 25% from ischemic heart disease, and 43% from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Wow, wow, wow. All in all, the air we breathe is killing us then. Outside air pollution adds up to the deaths of 4 million people each year. What makes air pollution especially problematic and sinister is the fact that the damage it causes happens very gradually, which makes it hard for our brains that didn't evolve with subtle dangers in mind to realize the scope of the problem. Collectively, air pollution from fossil fuels is estimated to have killed around 100 million people in the past 50 years. 
that is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's almost like nat- nature's, well, it's not even nature's genocide. It's like we're doing it to ourselves and we don't even realize it. And then you see people who've got like this um, massive objection towards burning fossil fuels and stuff like that. I can kind of see their point, guys, all right? Um, we, we need a better energy source, man, to make our air clean again. But wait, is that really fair? Fossil fuels also provide over 80% of global energy, so it makes sense that they cause the most deaths. So let's compare deaths per energy unit. Deaths per energy unit produce. A few studies have compared the death rates from different energy sources per one terawatt hour. That's about the annual energy consumption of 27,000 EU citizens, or 12,600 US citizens. To produce that much energy for one year, coal causes 25 deaths, oil causes 18, and natural gas, 3. Renewable energy causes one death every few decades. And nuclear, in the worst case, nuclear energy would cause one death every 14 years. One study even found that nuclear energy actually saved 2 million lives between 1971 and 2009 by displacing fossil fuels from the global energy mix. Right, so that is that is probably news for everyone then, guys, in terms of its actual overall safety. That's blown my brains away. I can't believe that, you know, the, the, the better choice is obviously renewable energy, wind turbines and all of that kind of stuff, but nuclear energy is pretty close second, all right? That's in terms of... Why aren't we using more of it then? It must be the cost factor, surely. But yeah, fossil fuels, man, needs it needs to go. From what I'm seeing on this, it needs to go, guys. What do you think? Am I right? I don't know, man. The numbers are clear. Even when using wildly pessimistic numbers, nuclear energy is among the safest forms of energy generation. And at a time when we're struggling to slow down rapid climate change, it's a really valuable low-carbon option. However, all these facts still leave one major argument that is fielded against nuclear power. Opponents of nuclear energy argue that nuclear waste and its lack of long-term storage solutions is an unacceptable problem and risk, while proponents of nuclear energy say that until renewable energies are able to cover the complete energy demands of mankind, it's arguably safer to store nuclear waste for the time being than to inhale poisonous gases and promote rapid climate change. What do you think about that then? Should we be storing all of the nuclear waste anywhere? Um, or should we be allowing our renewable, our, our um, you know, coal and stuff like that, our fossil fuels to burn into our atmosphere? I'm probably swayed more towards the storage of nuclear waste, personally. But, you know, what's the consensus saying? Let me know in the chat, guys. But a detailed discussion about nuclear waste would go too far here. More about it in our sources. Let us know if you'd like a whole video about it. Yeah, I so mind. looking at the comparative death rates, it's a bit concerning that some countries are replacing nuclear energy with fossil fuels, mostly coal. Especially Germany and Japan have been the most active in dismantling their nuclear fleet. In a ploy to appease the public, the German government shut down 11 of its 17 nuclear facilities and plans to close the remaining reactors in 2022. Why? The immediate gap in energy production was filled by temporarily increasing coal production, the energy source with the largest health impacts and the worst consequences for climate change. Right, that doesn't make any a sense A 2019 to me. analysis concluded that as a consequence, the nuclear phase-out has led to 1,100 avoidable deaths per year in Germany due to the increased air pollution in the years after 2010. So, in conclusion, nuclear energy feels way more dangerous than it actually is. Yeah. No matter how you look at it, the one thing we should strive to get rid of as quickly as possible are fossil fuels to prevent the deaths they cause each year and to slow down climate change. Regardless of how much you personally care about climate change issues or which energy source you favour, saving millions of lives should be something we can all agree on. Mm. Maybe you've actually made some kind of resolution to try and be more sustainable this year. or. Maybe your goals are more about you as a person and you'd like to pick up some new skills. Still being stuck mostly inside is the perfect time to work on that plan. Right, I like that idea where we pedal a bike and charges our phones. Is this even a thing? If it's not, it needs to be, guys, yeah, because I would definitely use that. Plus, I need to lose a bit of weight as well. And we've partnered with Skillshare, an online learning community that offers thousands of classes.
home more enjoyable and learning something new you get unlimited access to all right i think that's it guys that one um that was an eye opener there's a reason it's got like nearly two million or three million views in one day um it's really it, yeah it's, it's made me think an awful lot about actually i never really bothered too much about climate change and things like that it wasn't really within my kind of thought pattern but that video has really opened my eyes up to it and it makes logical sense to even if we don't use nuclear energy the the energy that we are using is is not good enough it's not good enough for even if you don't care about nature which we all should it's not good for us as human beings you know but um yeah, man, if we look after nature, nature will look after us. And, and without sounding too grainy and stuff like that, why are, we, why are we shutting down nuclear power plants and not storing the energy instead of burning all of these fossil fuels into, the, into our environment, you know, and all of the avoidable deaths? I mean, it's just crazy that we have that, guys. I think that's a step back in evolution, not a step forward. But what do you think is the way forward? I'm all for wind turbines and renewable energy. I think that's the way it should be, okay? And if everyone had to cycle their bike to charge their phone, then we'd be fit and healthier as a result. But uh, I think we need to look into more things like that. That was an excellent video. I really, really, really enjoyed that one, guys. If you liked it, then uh, please smash a like, share, and subscribe. Members, thank you, guys. I generally mean this when I'm saying this. I, I, I really appreciate each and every one of you for helping me with this channel. Your support is very, very, very much appreciated, and it's it's really helping me to do these videos each and every day. Like I say, um, you know, this is this is work for me. So the fact that you're paying me to work and and your small donations is a is a massive, massive um, gesture that I'm I'm grateful for, guys. So if you want to become a member, press the join button. If you don't see a join button, click on the link in the description, guys. Okay, and while Whilst we're on that, I am nearly at a thousand subscribers on my gaming channel. So press the link in the description of my second channel, Gen Dit Gaming, and let's get to that a thousand um, subscriber milestone. Okay, I'd really appreciate it if that happened. The sooner we get to the thousand mark, the sooner we put content on there, guys. Okay, but other than that, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate you, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.